The result of early morning raids on separate houses. Both crops were um, fairly well developed and they were cultivating um, new crops. There's a lot of seedlings found as well. So obviously it was an on-growing crop that they'll rotate through. In one house on Warrata Drive, police seized around 80 cannabis plants. The larger of the two finds was metres away on Airlybank Road, where more than 100 plants were found. Police say both involved a hydroponic setup and are believed to be connected. Through further investigation, we'll be able to establish the connection between the two. A man who was inside one of the homes at the time was arrested. Two cars were also seized as part of the investigation. The Trobe Special Duties Unit, created to target and shut down drug networks, was among the crews on scene. The heavy police presence alerting neighbours to the incident. Didn't believe that it happened in my street. You don't expect to have drugs in our area, and especially right across the road. It isn't the first time police have raided properties in this part of Morwell. In February, cannabis plants were found inside a home just metres down the road. But police can't confirm whether these discoveries are connected. At this stage, we're mainly concentrating on these two, but of course we'll take those into consideration. A 57-year-old man has been charged with trafficking, possessing and cultivating a commercial quantity of drugs. Alexandria Zadzimarkis, Nine News. Battling the blaze from above, the aerial attack continued for a second day as bombers targeted smouldering land. Blackened paddocks show where the fire tore through more than 200 hectares of plantation and farmland, coming close to houses. Residents in Allenbank and Cloverley were issued a watch and act message, some opting to leave, while others, like Neil Park, stayed. Saturday night, it was just like a ball of fire behind me there, and just, yeah, actually pretty, the noise of it was phenomenal, and the, the heat coming off it was, yeah, really bad, and then the embers falling on us everywhere. The fire started on Saturday night, burning roughly 30 hectares. By the next day, it had almost doubled in size, winds fanning the blaze. Crews successfully stopped it from crossing McDonald's track. But they weren't without their challenges. It's very steep and uh, some really difficult gullies, so we, we can't get machines to a lot of this, this fire. Crews will take advantage of the cooler conditions over the next few days to make sure the fire edge is secure and can't spread. When the weather warms up again and, and the winds turn from the west back into the north, we want to be sure that we've got the edge of this fire secured. So a lot of hard work over the next few days to get that safe and tied up. Police are investigating the cause of the blaze but believe it started on the side of the road on Daff's track. Alexandria Dadzimarkis, Nine News. Accused of murdering a baby, 27-year-old Jason Noy was ushered into court for day one of the committal hearing. Last July, 11-month-old Harrow died at his Painesville home one week shy of his first birthday. The court heard he sustained a snapped spine and severed aorta, the cause of death, blunt force trauma. A forensic pathologist described the injuries as rare and only seen in high-speed motor vehicle accidents, telling the court the transection of the aorta is a lethal injury which can lead to death in a matter of tens of seconds. Harrow's mum, Jamie Malcolm, gave evidence via video link. She recalled the night of her baby's death and the moment she knew something was wrong. He wasn't breathing, wasn't moving, his skin was yellow and his eyes were glassy. I tried talking to him and he didn't respond. I asked him what happened and he said, I don't know, just ring an ambulance. Jamie Malcolm told the court Noy, her boyfriend at the time, took a fatherly role and she wasn't worried, leaving her kids alone with him. The court also heard that Harrow had other injuries, fractures and bruises, which occurred prior to the day of his death. Noy this afternoon pleaded not guilty. He's been committed to stand trial. A stab wound and bruising serve as physical reminders of the alleged attack. I was just crying and in shock. My whole body, I don't even know what it did, it just was shaking from the inside out. Kiara and a friend were spending the day at Maui when they say they noticed a group of teens following them. Feeling uneasy, they walked to Albert Street Primary School, the group not far behind. It's there in broad daylight. Police allege the attack took place. They just started pushing me to the ground and bashing me. They stabbed me in the leg. I just heard like a a girl just like screaming for help as she ran around the corner and she just ran straight to 
to me. Laura McNiff was the first to help. The stranger took the 12-year-old to a nearby shop and told them to lock the doors. Today, the two reunited. I'm just so grateful that Laura stopped and helped her and um, got her to safety. According to Laura, Kiara's initial calls for help were ignored. She says many at this busy shopping complex simply watched on as the 12 year old bloodied and scared screamed for help. Police have charged two 13 year old girls. Little comfort for Kiara, who is now living in fear. She said that she wasn't finished with us. Alexandria Zazimakis, Nine News.